ما يريده هو الاستماع الى كلماته عن النبي يسوع الله يجازيه خيرا على ما يفعل فاعرف طبيبا مثله كل مرضاه يشفون اذا وصلوا قبل فوات This one might be a real emergency. You go back to sleep. I'll be all right. <laughs> كيفك هلا؟ سيد رأسه يا عمر نعم يا معين كيف يوم زفن ثلاثة أيام هيك قد جاءت زوجتك يا الله سيد رأسه يا عمر نعم معين جاءت زوجتك هذا هو الوضع المرجنسي Okay, quantition. Oh. Take it easy. <laughs> All righty, so start the generator. We're ready for the lights now. كيف حال عظمه؟ أخبرنا عن عظمه. أخبرنا كيف أحلى؟ ماذا يجري؟ أرجوك. This is bad. <clears throat> all right, all right, just... Hmm, bad infection. Uh, nothing much uglier than a camel bite. How long ago did this happen? They weren't sure. They think about three days ago. Have we ever seen him before? He's a nomad. Just happened to be nearby with this caravan, so they brought him here. Government clinic was closer. I guess it's a sign of success when a Muslim would rather trust an infidel to treat a camel bite. <laughs> All right. Mm 
90 over 60, dear. We better get the spinal anesthesia started then. All right, let's get you up on your left side. Now turn on your left side. Get him back on his back. Okay, friend, you can turn back now. Easy does it. Allah ready? Yes, Doctor. Ruth? Let's go. Friend, we're going to pray now. Our Heavenly Father, guide our hands. Give us the skill that this patient may have healing. And above all, that he may accept Jesus Christ as his personal Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. Mayo scissors. Uh, thumb forceps. Now, let's get him on antibiotics right away. Uh, two million units of penicillin daily. Yes, doctor. We're getting low on penicillin. How low? We have enough, unless we have another one of these. Sponge right there. Yes, doctor. Okay. Well, it's been held up before. Probably being delayed by the government. Occasionally, they like to remind us that they're still in charge. It's almost daylight. Not enough time to get any more sleep, I guess. Just about time to start clinic. Sometimes I forget what it's like to get a whole night's sleep. Or finish a meal. <laughs> doctor! 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 It's Ibrahim. Hello, Ibrahim. How are things at the government clinic? Very well, doctor. Only not so many patients as you have, but some are plenty sick. Well, how may I help you? You know, sir, I'm pretty good, doctor. Only sometimes there's this... <laughs> well, we all have to consult once in a while. They brought in this child from the bush. His hand looks like this. Hmm. Leprosy? I don't know. I could treat him, but I think maybe you... Where's the boy's family? No family. Where's the boy? Can he walk? i bring him over right away. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. God's word plainly tells us that while healing for the body is good, healing for the soul is far better. You have come here with your families from all over the district because you're sick and need help for your physical bodies. It may be we can give you medicine today or perform surgery that will make you well, but far better to receive the word of life that I bring you from God's word. The Bible says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Through Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, 
you can receive healing that will last far beyond this life throughout all eternity. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the healing message that comes from your word that will save us from the terrible sickness of sin. And I pray in Jesus' name that many may receive him today. Amen. I'm going to see as many of you as I can today. In order to be fair, I'll give you numbers in the order that you came here. As soon as I give out the tickets, you may begin going inside. <laughs> this baby looks pretty sick. You better get her in the clinic right away. Take this and show it to the nurse inside. May I take you, baby? Would you come with us, please? Check her mucous membranes. I'll hold her. Okay. She has gingivitis. Is my baby all right? Yes, your baby will be fine. The doctor wants you to bring the child back every day and we'll give her some milk. Then you come back the day after market day and we'll change your bandage. If you need to go for food, you keep this with you. And you come back when the sun's right over that wall. Uh, I'll need to see this baby today. You bring her back when the sun's high overhead. Keep that with you. Yes. Uh, Bush doctor did this to you, did he? Isa! Isa! Bring the stretcher here, please. <laughs> Fatima, we'll have to put your baby in traction. Take her to the nurses inside. You come back tomorrow and we'll give you some more medicine. Bye. Bye-bye, nurse. Now, the doctor's going to want you to take six of these. You need to take one in the morning when the cock crows, and this one right before you go to bed at night. Let's take the first one. Isa, please ask him his name. Nasuna. Oh, Nasuna. A bandula of Bunjava. What village is he from? Nagida. Mini Kukuku. Spur. What is your trouble? Laugh, yeah, Kalaf. Oh, no. Have him take that on up to the nurses. Fatima, the doctor wants to put your baby in traction. You may stay with her while she's in the hospital. All right. That's all I can see today. I'm sorry. If you'll come back the next clinic day, you'll be first in line. Doctor. Doctor. Sadetti. I am glad to see you. It has been some days since you've come to visit me at my compound. I hope I have not offended you. Oh, of course not. As you can see, we're quite busy. I understand. Come next market day. In the meantime, I have yet another patient for you. Oh? Where is he? At my compound. He's my kinsman from a distant village. What's his problem? His eye is very bad. I told his family of your good work, and they have traveled over 200 kilometers to bring him. I'm glad you have faith in my medicine. I wish you had faith also in my savior. So you've told me many times. I believe the word of God will eventually persuade you. It is because you use the word of God and not the empty words of men that I listen to you. 
Have you read the scripture portion I gave you? Yes, over and over. I found it interesting because it teaches that Jesus will return. You're one of the few people in the village who can read, and you read Arabic rather than the local language. Yeah. Meantime, bring your relative, what's his name? Suleiman. Bring Suleiman to the hospital. I'll see him as soon as I can. Excuse me, doctor. My name is Yusufu. I am the deputy director of the Ministry of Health. This is Dr. Akbar, the chief surgeon at our government hospital in the capital. May we speak with you for a moment? Of course. Isa, would you get us another chair, please? Yeah. Dr. Akbar, please be seated. You seem very busy today. All about normal for clinic day. How many patients are there? We average 300 or 350. And you see all those yourself this week? No, we'll see all those today. How many days a week do you do this, doctor? Three days, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And the other days? Surgery in the mornings, we treat inpatients in the hospital. On Saturdays, we have uh, special clinics for patients with leprosy and tuberculosis. And then we visit the villages. Actually, doctor, there is uh, some concern at the Ministry of Health about your medical practice. My medical practice? It is not possible to give proper care to so many patients. You need more help. Every patient receives adequate treatment. Of course, we would welcome more help. <laughs> Why don't you use some of our own people? Fact is, we are training some of the young men to assist. Ah, oh, these ignorant bush people, they can't do medical work. I mean doctors and nurses from the capital. I have no objection to such people, so long as they share our faith in Jesus Christ. Do you mean that Muslims do not have compassion for the sick? Not at all. But we make no secret of the fact that one of our purposes of the medical work here is to preach the gospel. Now, we cannot do that unless every member of our staff can bear witness to Christ. Do not speak that name to me again. Your words cut me to the heart. You cannot mix religion and medicine. I cannot separate them. Doctor, our concern is for the health of our people. Your buildings here seem rather inadequate. It's possible to practice good medicine without the most modern buildings. Come, doctor. You can't deny that you could use more money. Every hospital in the world could use more money. No, our government is willing to give you money. We cannot accept money from your government or even from our own. God will supply our needs through the giving of his people. Can God supply you with penicillin? You speak of concern for your people and you withhold medicine from them? Doctor, I have read a number of the reports you have filed. I was most impressed with the variety of cases that you handle. Well, as the only doctor in the district, naturally, I see a great variety of cases. But how is it possible for one trained as an orthopedic surgeon able to perform so many other types of surgeries? I can only assure you that I am properly trained for the work that I do. I'm sure you can appreciate our fears. I wonder if you would object to our observing your surgical procedures. I have no objection provided you're willing to observe the normal precautions. Of course. Well, we'll be back tomorrow then, Doctor. Very well. Thank you, Doctor. Good day. Ibrahim, what are you doing here? Well, I'm coming to consult with the doctor about a difficult case. What's wrong with him? Oh, leprosy. Why do you bring him here? What's wrong with the government clinic? I can do nothing for him. Only Al Masihu can fix this. But Al Masihu, the doctor is an infidel. Dauda doesn't care. Don't you have other patients? No, we're closed. Closed? Yes, we're only open six hours. It's government rule. Oh. Did 
The doctor told me to bring him here this morning. The doctor will see you shortly. Thank you. You feel anything here? How about here? Feel anything? Okay, take the blindfold off. All right, try. See if you can touch your thumb with your little finger, okay? Try that. Can you do that? Can you? Okay. There's some intrinsic paralysis, but the leprosy seems to be inactive. Let's run some tests, some skin smears, sedimentation rate, hemoglobin. Okay, I think we can make you just about as good as new, right? Doctor, sedatis relative is ready. Okay, I'll see him in just a minute. Uh, Suleiman, isn't it? Yes, doctor. I'm afraid he's not very cooperative. All right, I'll be right there. Yes. Uh, let's see what his tests say. We may schedule him for surgery tomorrow when we see the results. Bye-bye. How long has your eye been like this? Does he speak the local language? He can understand you, doctor. Let's uh, close the windows, make the room dark. Now, we're going to have to examine your eye. Well, <clears throat> sight's gone. Let's open the window so <clears throat> tumor is extensive. And the secondary infection is deep. We must remove the eye. No! No! Now, Suleiman, if we remove the eye, you'll lose an eye which cannot see. But if we wait, you may lose your life. Your body is already full of the poison from the infection. Yes. Good. Uh, let's use aqueous penicillin, um, 500,000 units, Q8H, and schedule him for surgery tomorrow morning. The skin smears are negative. Hemoglobin's 13 grams. Sedimentation rate is 11 millimeters. Well, thank the Lord, the leprosy seems to be in remission and the hemoglobin's adequate. I think we can go ahead with the surgery. Uh, get Dowder ready for tomorrow. Remember, we have company tomorrow. Mm, well, We'll give him something to see. We'll do the boy first, and then Suleiman. All right, let's see if the brachial block has taken effect. Dauda, can you feel anything here? Okay, how about here? All right. Okay, I think he's ready. May I ask, doctor, what operation is this? Well, due to the peripheral nerve involvement because of leprosy, there's intrinsic paralysis. Uh, we're going to correct that with multiple tendon transfers. I'm not aware of such a procedure. It's an operation which I helped develop. And by what authority do you do this? Without this surgery, this boy would be a cripple the rest of his life. This is most unusual. Well, it's an operation I've performed successfully dozens of times. Now, We've allowed you to observe here today, but I cannot be distracted. So from now on, I must ask you to remain silent. 
Everything all right? Tourniquet's fine. Steady at 300. Good. Dowda, we're going to pray now. Oh, Lord, I ask you to grant special skill in this surgery that through this operation, Dowda will find restoration of health. Grant, I pray thee, a speedy healing, and I ask that as a result of our ministry, this boy might open his heart to the gospel of Jesus Christ, in whose name I pray. Amen. Tourniquet time. 905, Doctor. Uh, steady. At 300. Good. All right. Right here. Right. Now just hold that a second. There. All right, you hold that. Okay, now hold this. Thank you, doctor, for allowing us to observe your surgery. You're quite welcome. There is no question, minister, that his skills are extraordinary. We have observed him perform the eye operation as well as a procedure of his own devising. Whatever his training, I can tell you as a doctor that he is fully qualified to do everything mentioned in those reports. How can you give such a recommendation to an infidel? He prays over every operation in the name of Jesus the prophet. Ah, that is another matter. I'm only giving my opinion as a doctor. He absolutely refused any financial assistance. He'll accept no help from us of any kind. We are an Islamic state. However, until we have enough medical personnel, we have judged it expedient to allow many of these mission works to continue, provided the threat to Islam is not too great. In this case, the threat is greater than we thought. This infidel is as good a preacher as he is a doctor. So you have told us. Well, I think you'll have to pay him one more visit. Your pardon, Minister. It would be a pity to lose his medical services. Our own clinic in that area is not adequate. Islam is more important than medicine. However, perhaps you can reason with him. Some sort of compromise. But let him know our patience is at an end. The preaching must stop. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Righteousness. And with the mouth confession. Confession is made unto salvation. How oh, well. you like this, right? Oh. Jesus loves me. Mama! Mama! Azumi! Look what I brought for Amasihu. He cured me. He told me about Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. How do you do, madam? Is your husband the doctor at home? He's in the back. Good day, Doctor. Good day, Mr. Minister. You see, Doctor, you do need help. I've told you before we would welcome more help. Well, why does your God not send you some young men? God no doubt calls young men, but he does not force them to come. 
I pray that more will answer the call. Well, remember, our government has offered you help. And we cannot accept your help. In that case, I have an alternative to propose. It is my opinion, Doctor, that you'd have more time for your necessary work if you spend less time propagating your religion. I told your government when they invited me here that my preaching is my necessary work. Of course, Doctor, I understand. I'm not uh, recommending that you cease preaching altogether. We know perfectly well that it has been your habit to travel all over this district for the purpose of preaching. It's been my goal to preach the gospel in every village and nomad camp in this district. And that is most commendable. Now, you see, I do not propose that you give up this part of your uh, missionary work, only that you do not allow this work to interfere with your medical practice. When a man comes to me who has a need in his soul, I can no more ignore that need than I could send him away without medicine. Come, doctor. You're a reasonable man. Consider this. You can still preach, and you can still practice medicine. Just not both at the same time. Surely it is better to cooperate in a minor point and keep the clinic open. Are you threatening to close the clinic? Not at all. And to show you that we wish to cooperate with you, your penicillin will be delivered next week. Thank you. You see, you have not given up anything. All we ask is for the same cooperation. Remember, no more preaching at the clinic. I was just thinking about all the people we haven't reached yet. But you've reached thousands. You've preached Christ in places that aren't even on the map. The actual converts seem so few. Since when are numbers so important to us? You've planted the seed, and Muslims are being saved. But when we leave, what then? These people can't read. We can't even leave the witness of the word with them. Ruthie, is it possible I've been wrong about this? Maybe we ought to give in just a little. If I couldn't preach at the clinic, I could still preach here at our own compound, and the medical work could still go on. What would these people do without us? Are we that important? I may fool myself, but I'll never fool you. Even if you were right, it would only be temporary. Yeah. Even if I were right. And I'm not right, am I? We settled this with the Lord a long time ago. We can't change now just because of pressure. We've got to give the gospel to every patient we treat. doing pretty well. Now, Fathomo, you're going to have to keep her just as still as possible for the next couple of days. The nurses will help you feed her. Ruth, you better keep a close eye on this. It's knitting pretty well, but we'll need to change the traction in a day or two. All right. his blood pressure. Well, how are you feeling this morning? Mm. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Does that hurt? Yeah. Okay, I think we can let you get up a little bit tomorrow, right? 
Hello, Sullivan. Are you feeling better today? May I examine your eye? Well, I think you are feeling better. We'll tell Sedetti your family can come now and bring food. Suleiman's going to need a new dressing on his eye. Pleased to see you, Doctor. I am pleased to see you also. Will you have some tea? With pleasure. Ahmed, the mats. Please be seated, Doctor. Thank you. Bring tea. I am glad you have come today, my friend. Sedetti, the government begins to fear our work. I'm afraid our time here may be very short. My prayer for you is that you may accept the salvation offered through Jesus Christ. I know that all men need salvation from their sins. This I have been taught since I was a child. God's word teaches that salvation comes only through Jesus, God's Son. Muhammad teaches us that God has no son. Muhammad is only a man. Listen to what God himself, in his word, says about Jesus. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Can God lie? Allah cannot lie. Again, God's word says, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. I know that I have eternal life. Do you have this assurance? I do not have the assurance that you possess. God tells us over and over in his word that we must accept Jesus to receive salvation from sin. Doctor, although I am not an old man, I am a haji. I have made my pilgrimage to Mecca. I thought that there I would find freedom from sin. But in Mecca, I found only a large, noisy city filled with the same sins that are here in my own village. I returned without peace. And still I seek salvation. God's word promises that Jesus can bring salvation and peace. Is it possible to get this book in my own language? When I go to the capital next, I will try to get you a copy. 
then God can speak to you through his word when I am no longer here. You speak as if you expect to leave soon. They have demanded that I stop preaching at the clinic. Will you stop? Would you? My friend, you have taught that all men without Jesus will go to hell. If I believed that, I would spend my life teaching it to others. I've got something for you. See that? I want you to try this for me. I want you to try squeezing it for me like that. Think you can do that? All right, let's try it. That's good. That's good. You keep that up. Very good. Very good. Much better than I had expected. You're feeling better too, aren't you? Much better, doctor. Thank you. You have given me my health again. I wish you would allow Jesus to heal your soul as the surgery has healed your body. I have listened carefully to your preaching each day that I have been here. I have been thinking about the words you have spoken. Good. Tomorrow's the Lord's Day. I'll be speaking from God's Word again. Afterwards, if you wish, we can talk further. Isa, Suleiman needs uh, another dressing on his eye. Yes, doctor. Like that. My good dear, Yesu, my good dear, Yesu, Yesu, Shiriki. My good dear, Yesu, Yesu, my good dear, Yesu, Yesu, Shiriki. My good dear, Yesu, Yesu, my good dear, Yesu, Yesu, me. Why is it that you work here among these Christian missionaries? Because I'm a Christian. I came here like you, very sick. The doctor cured me. In Jesus' name. He said Jesus could forgive my sins. Then I asked Jesus to come into my heart. Now I'm happy and I'm learning to read. The missionary's wife is teaching me. Why do you want to read? So I may read the word of God myself. The missionaries are not always around to teach me. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. I want everyone here to know that the gospel is for you. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If thou is shalt there a clinic today? With thy mouth, well, not Lord today. Jesus, this is the Christian holy day. Well, then why are all these men here? The we want to hear the doctor's thou words. Thou shalt be saved. That is why I'm here, to make known the name of Jesus. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of Jesus. I wish everyone in the country could hear my voice. I wish they could hear me in the capital. Why? Because 
I want everyone to know that Jesus is the power of God unto salvation to everyone. It makes no difference what language you speak or what color you are or what tribe you're from or how many sheep or camels or goats you have. The gospel is for everyone. Everyone who will believe that Jesus bore our sins on the cross and made it possible for us to have salvation. O oh Lord, I pray that this message may sink into the hearts of these men and that many may accept Jesus as Savior. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor, I have listened to the words that you and the Isa have spoken to me. And today I wish to tell you that I have put my faith in Jesus. Thank the Lord. Now, just to be certain, who is Jesus? The Son of God. And what has he done for you? He has taken my sins on himself. Have you ever confessed your sins to him? I have. And has he forgiven them? He has. How can you be sure? Isa taught me from the scriptures, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I believe the word of God. Father, we thank you for this food. We pray particularly for those like Sedeti to whom we minister and who need the witness of the word. We pray that come what may. Your voice was heard yesterday in the Capitol, Doctor. I've just received word the clinic is closed. Closed? When does this take effect? Today, right now. We're already moving the patients.
Solomon, you take care of Delta. Hurry before the sandstorm gets here. Ralph, you can't do that. You can't move this child. Leave her alone. Somebody stop him. Somebody help me. The baby. Stop that. Constable, that's enough. This is an outrage. What's happening to these people? They'll be taken to the government clinic. They'll be well cared for. The government clinic? They can't even... Look, what's the hurry? Can't we move these people properly? My orders are to close the clinic immediately. Naturally, you and your staff will have some time to arrange your affairs before leaving this district. Leaving? You have 72 hours. That's impossible. We have three households, a clinic, a hospital, a surgery, a maternity. All the equipment, the medicine? I'm sorry. My orders are 72 hours. These poor people. Ruth, let's hurry and pack. I'll take you and the nurses to the Capitol. I'll come back later for the heavy equipment. Yes. I see. Thank you. That took quite some knowing. I've been on the phone since you called me. Did the Minister of Health tell you anything? The Minister of Health happened to be out of town. That's the way they do business. They're supposed to give you some sort of reason for doing this to an American citizen. Here's what I've got. First, refusal to cooperate with government policies. Second, discriminatory practices at the clinic. Third, widespread religious teaching. Now, that's an odd complaint against a missionary. What's this about discrimination? I believe it's because we require everyone who comes to the clinic to listen to the gospel. Refusing to cooperate? I suppose you refuse to take their money. Well, Doctor, since these charges are technically correct, they have a right to deport you. There's nothing else that I can do. I'm sorry. Thank you anyway, Mr. Ambassador. Doctor, if it's any comfort to you, they're not criticizing your medical practices. This is a Muslim state. Your biggest offense is that you've been too effective in your ministry. Will you have to leave the country? I'm afraid so, Isa. Ruth and the others are already in the capital. Where's everybody else? They are threatening prison to anyone who comes here. Even though I'm not allowed inside. Are you all right? They have done nothing to me. But I will miss you. I'll miss you too, Isa. You must try to spread the gospel without me. I'll do my best. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Isa.
There is someone inside you will wish to see. Doctor! Doctor! Suleiman? In here. Dowder. Is he all right? My family is taking care of him. Good. As soon as we get these sutures out of your hand, you'll be all right. I'm glad you brought him tonight. I've got to leave early in the morning with the truck. Doctor, I wish you could stay. My first calling is to preach the gospel. If I can't preach, my medical work is finished also. Doctor, you have done so much for us. I wish there was something I could do in return. There is something. I promised this to Sedetti. Could you get it to him? You'll be in great danger if you take it. What is it? The word of God? It will be my work for Jesus to give it to Sadati. Then he can read the words to me also. I will take it. Sedati, the doctor has sent this for you. I have a great favor to ask of you. How may I serve you? I ask you to read to me from that book. Do you know what this book is? I know. And you want me to read this Christian Bible to you? Isa, the doctor's helper, has read to me. But he can read only a little. Do you know why the doctor sent this book to me? It is his hope that you become a Christian. And you? Surely he wants you also to be a Christian. Perhaps he has already persuaded you. You may despise me for an infidel, kinsman, but I must confess to you that I believe the word of God that the doctor has brought. I see. There is much in this book that interests me. I will read it to you, and in return you will tell me what you have found. Is that you? Yes, doctor, it is I. Sedati has the book. Doctor, do you think Sedati will accept our savior? We must pray that he will. Christ's work here must go on. 
Someone else must do it. Perhaps it will be Isa. Goodbye, Doctor. Suleiman? Suleiman! Perhaps it will be you. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God.